All right, guys, here's some questions that I definitely expected people to struggle with on the review. Um, this is that unit one review, so let me zoom in a little bit. Um, this one right here, a rectangle has a length of 7x and a width of 3x plus 4. Write a simplified expression that describes the perimeter. So just a reminder, perimeter means you are adding up all the sides. So I'm going to add up these sides that I currently have. But you've got to remember, and all we're doing is an expression. We don't really have a full equation here. You've got to remember that this is only two sides of your rectangle. So I've got to do something to account for the other length and the other width. What a lot of y'all have done has been kind of to go ahead and double that one and double that one. I'm totally okay with that. So this is only two of the sides. This gets all four of the sides. Um, you could take that and just double the whole entire thing. That would take into account now we've got all four sides. Uh, you could also see like, oh, so two times seven X plus two times that other side. No matter what version you do though, you're gonna end up kind of ultimately with this 14x plus 6x plus eight. And then to combine like terms and finish simplifying, I can go ahead and combine my variable, my like terms, and get 20x plus eight. Can't combine those because you cannot combine a variable with a constant, okay? They've gotta be like terms. So that is what should be on the answer key. If not, then we may have trouble. Um, the second one that I wanna look at is the one right underneath that. Kind of a difficult, another simplifying, not a full equation, but simplifying. So when you see parentheses, it's gonna typically mean distributive property, all right? Well, here's what's confusing, is in this problem, you're not really distributing anything. There's not a number out front. The seven X is not being distributed. A lot of times we can think of it as, well, we're distributing the plus, but really what you're distributing is a positive one. So positive one times three X squared is not gonna change it at all. Positive one times negative four, if I multiply a positive times a negative, it stays a negative and it does not change at all. So distributing a positive doesn't make that become positive. This back thing, I've got distributive property also, but here I'm distributing a negative one right there. So negative one times four X is negative four X. Negative one times five turns that into a negative five as well. Okay, so it's just distributive property first, distributed here, distributed here, now I'm gonna look for like terms. Remember, you've got dogs, two-headed dogs, which is like a whole nother category, and then you have just, I don't know, the number four outside, so that is a whole nother category. I'm kind of using symbols to show dogs, two-headed dogs, and then just numbers out in the yard. So this one would combine with my dogs. Those are like terms. 7x and negative 4x makes 3x, so I've just combined those two. My 3x squared doesn't really have anything else in like, like terms, so I'm just gonna leave 3x squared. And then this negative five, I can combine with the negative four, those two constants. Negative four and negative five, you can view that as plus a negative five makes negative nine. At this point, I've got dogs, two-headed dogs, and numbers, so I cannot combine those. Those are not like terms, okay? All right, next one. Let's just keep going down the line. Kind of a complicated uh, solution set of an inequality. Draw your line down through your equal sign. I'm gonna simplify this as much as I can. So I see parentheses, I'm gonna be distributing this negative two, so the six X is gonna just stay out there. Negative two times two X becomes negative four X. Negative two times negative three becomes plus six. I'm not gonna change my symbol there. The right hand side actually looks pretty good. It's pretty clean, so three X plus eight. I'm still gonna look, okay, and a lot of y'all are making this mistake. I'm not gonna try and think about going across this equation yet 
because I can still clean this up, okay? I'm not even looking at that side. Here, I can still combine 6x and negative 4x, or 6x minus 4x makes 2x plus 6 is less than or equal to 3x plus 8, okay? Now they're as simple as they get. Now I need to combine my variables. We typically try and combine and move the smaller of the two. So 2x is smaller. I'm going to subtract 2x to cancel it out on this side. But if I do it to one side of the equation, I also have to do it to the other side of the equation. So that's going to leave me with 1x plus 8 and then a 6 over here. Okay, everybody good at this point? Now to isolate the x, I'm going to subtract 8 so that it cancels out. Subtract 8 over here. 6 minus 8 becomes negative 2 is less than or equal to the 1x. I don't really need to write the 1. I can just put an x, which means I'm done. If I'm going to graph this, doesn't have to be a super fancy graph. Um, it is a closed circle because it can equal negative 2. And then my x is on the bigger side of the inequality, so I want the numbers that are bigger than the negative 2. So numbers that are bigger than negative 2 are over here to the right. That's how we're going to graph that. Okay? All right. One more because I know that you guys hate fractions and you're kind of babies when it comes to fractions. No offense. Um, this one right here, this 3 fifths x minus 2. I love this problem because a lot of you are going to look at this and automatically think add 2, right? The issue with adding 2 is that you can't combine a number with a variable. So instead, we need to notice that, hey, we've got multiple variables here. If this fraction is freaking you out, change it to a decimal. Use it as a decimal, whatever that is. I'm not going to tell you. But I'm going to go ahead and subtract 3 fifths x so that 3 fifths minus 3 fifths cancels. I'm going to subtract 3 fifths x over here. So I get negative 2. That negative has to pull down with the 2. Equals, okay, now you got to have some number sense. 1 whole minus 3 fifths leaves behind... 2 fifths x. I don't need to go to negatives. If you did a decimal, okay, fine, I'll tell you. This is 0. 0.6, so 1 minus 0. 0.6 equals 0. 0.4, which is 2 fifths, okay? Now, to cancel out a fraction, I'm to the point where I need to isolate x. Multiply by the reciprocal, okay? This way, 5 times 2 becomes 10, and 5 times 2 becomes 10. That just makes a 1, so it cancels out, okay? So I get x, but if I multiply this side times 5 halves, I also have to multiply this side times 5 halves. So I'm going to go ahead and make this 2 over 1. Let's see, that makes negative 10 over 2 times 1 is 2, which I can simplify to negative 5, okay? All right, check the answer key on those. Hopefully I haven't made any mistakes, but um, good luck. I'll be around for tutoring in the morning. If you're just really struggling, I hope this helps.